Greetings, my name is Christopher Paisley. I'm a Philadelphia public school teacher. This is my YouTube channel, Inside White Fragility. Today, I'd like to talk about the word whiteness. And when progressives use the word whiteness, what they mean is white people. Now, there was a great article published today in The Federalist by a writer named David Marcus, and I believe David Marcus is the New York correspondent for The Federalist, and this is a great article. Um, again, the title of the article is When Progressives Say Whiteness, They Mean White People. And the interesting thing about this article is I was thinking about this for the last couple of days, and I was actually, I've been thinking about this for the last couple of months, the fact that progressives play games with semantics, and they use this really racist, inflammatory, insulting, divisive, polarizing, toxic. There's all these adjectives to describe this whole push to target and dismantle and disrupt whiteness. And they play this little game because they claim, oh, we don't mean white people. Oh, we don't mean white culture. We're just going to insult and inflame, vilify white people, white culture, et cetera, et cetera. But we really don't mean white people. Anybody can be white. Any, anybody can be enact whiteness and all this nonsense because it's really just nonsense. It's double speak and they're speaking out of both sides of their mouths because they'd like to play this little game and people need to start calling it out. And basically, David Marcus of The Federalist, he called it out today, and it's a great article. And again, it's something I've been thinking about, and he just beat me to the punch, and he wrote this article. So I want to quote, I want to read some of it. I'm going to link the article in the description of this YouTube video. And then what I want to do is I want to go over three education people. Some of them are professors. Some of them are educators. Bree Pickauer, um, a professor named Barner Hess, and then another educator named Nylea Weber. And they all promote this really vile, racist brand of so so-called whiteness, and I want to talk about this and to stop being fooled by, by this term whiteness and when these progressives say that it's not really about white people because it is. All right, so here's this article by uh, David Marcus in The Federalist. American progressives are the masters of euphemism. They don't censor books or plays. They retire them. They don't remove lessons about the founding fathers from our kids' curriculum. They decenter them. At every turn, they find some friendly-sounding phrase to obscure the illiberal and savage attacks they make on our culture. But one progressive euphemism stands out as uniquely dangerous, whiteness, and that is so true. Okay, so I'm just going to get to the um, bottom of his article to give a quick summary. I don't want to read the whole thing, but again, I'm going to link it. But this is really powerful, and this is really important. What makes all of this so dangerous is that progressives are not railing against a system. They are railing against people. Remember that. They claim it's against a system. Make no bones about it. It's against people. They are not demonizing a culture. They are demonizing people. This is why white people must confess their privilege. Okay? They must feel shame and contrition for the immoral nature of their pigmentation. Any clear-headed person can see what a dangerous game this is. The anecdote to progressive doublespeak is to say what they refuse to say. They do censor, they do remove, and yes, they do mean white people when they talk about who has to change and how to save our society. In this way, progressives regularly express good old-fashioned racism about white people and their ways under the guise of some broad investigation of that society. But do not be fooled. The next time you read about whiteness, the next time it is scapegoated into the cause of all that ail society, know what is being said. They truly believe the problem is white people. So again, when you hear the word whiteness, make no bones about it. Make no mistakes. They are talking about white people. When you hear the word whiteness, it means white people. And I'm going to say that emphatically because it's true. And no little semantic loophole is going to change that. Okay, because here's the simple fact. If you don't mean white people or white culture, why are you using the word whiteness? We know why they're using the word whiteness. Because they mean white people, and that's, that's part of the game. And they're going to push this stuff to the edge until someone finally goes, enough is enough. You cannot judge a person by the color of their skin. Okay, you're, you're violating federal anti-discrimination laws. You're going to get sued. And people are already starting to sue. But that's something that everyone needs to remember. People, normal, rational, everyday, good American people of all races, okay, of all ethnicities, doesn't matter your race, religion, gender, sexuality. If you're a good person and you care about, you know, looking at a person as a person, you have good values, 
okay, you have morals, you're a good person, you're going to know that the word whiteness is offensive. You're going to know that the word whiteness is inflammatory, that it is targeting a race of people, and that is wrong. It's wrong. You can't do it. So make no mistakes about it. I'm going to keep repeating this. When the progressives say the word whiteness, they mean white people. Now, I want to get into the examples that I talked about. Now, the first example is Brie Pickauer. Okay, Brie Pickauer just published a book. It's called Reading, Writing, and Racism. And she has this whole kind of, I call it a disclaimer in, in um, the beginning of her book where she, she, first of all, she just rips apart whiteness and she, this racist, toxic stuff. She's indoctrinating student teachers, new teachers. She's indoctrinating young current teachers and our children and our curriculum in our classrooms, our K-12 classrooms and higher education. She's pumping in this, this divisive, toxic, anti-white rhetoric. And then it's kind of a game, okay, I'm going to put a disclaimer in here so that we're going to tell everybody it's really not about white people. So here's what she says. Whiteness is not synonymous with white people. Instead, it is the way in which people, generally white people, enact racism in ways that consciously and unconsciously maintain this broader system of white supremacy. While individual people of color may also enact whiteness, they do not benefit from the broader system of white supremacy in the ways that white people do. White supremacy is the what, white people are typically the who, and whiteness is the how. So there's the little game, the little disclaimer, the double speak, the loophole that she uses to be a racist and to push this toxic racism into our schools and on our teachers and on, on, on our children. But remember, make no mistakes, and I'm going to say this again and again and again. When progressives like pick our say whiteness, they mean white people. Let's not forget that. Okay, now we have this professor. His name is Barner Hess, and he's an associate professor of African studies uh, political science and sociology at Northwestern University, I believe. Uh, the reason why his name came up is because there was that story that Christopher Rufo, I believe he broke or he's the one that really made it, made it kind of brought a light to it. Um, this New York school principal at this private school urged parents to become white abolitionists with this propaganda graphic that came right from this guy, Barner Hess. It was his curriculum. And the name of this thing was called The Eight White Identities, and it broke all of these things down, these eight uh, white identities, and it started with the white supremacists, and it went all the way down to the bottom, which was the white abolitionist. And it was really inflammatory, really insulting, inflammatory, racist language, okay? And of course, we all know why this is being used, because it's all about agitation propaganda. It's all about supposedly bringing attention to these inequities. But what it's really doing is it's just continuing the inequities, because it's not empowering people of color. It's zero sum. Attacking, harassing white culture, white people is not empowering people of color. They're not self-empowered by this. Trashing somebody else doesn't teach anybody skills. It doesn't give anybody a better quality of life. Okay. But this stuff is inflammatory. So this guy pushed this stuff out. Supposedly this principal took it and, and used it. But here's the funny thing about this, this professor, this guy, Barner Hess, and I hope I'm saying his name correctly and nothing personal. Okay. I'm talking as an educator to an educator and I'm talking about this hopefully in a way as an academic. So it's nothing personal, but here's the funny part about Barner Hess's, um, th this, this graphic of the eight white identities. And here's the thing. This is a ripoff, okay? This guy, Barner Hess, is a hack. No offense, Barner, but you're a hack, okay? And here's why, all right? The things that he's using to, to talk about these eight white identities are just a simple regurgitation and a simple ripoff of things that Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum was doing 30 years ago, almost 40 years ago, 30 years ago now, okay? She wrote about white racial identity development. Uh, the acronym is RID. White Racial Identity Development. She wrote all about it 30 years ago, okay? Uh, Dr. Janet Helms wrote about this in the 80s and 90s, almost 40 years ago, okay? You have Dr. James Banks, who was writing about this stuff in the 80s and 90s, r white racial identity development, and there was all kinds of identity developments. There was black racial identity development, Asian, they broke it down by the identities. And then you have this other writer, his name is uh, uh, Gary Howard, who talked about this in the 90s, okay? So it's like... This stuff has been around, and when these writers and, and educators and scholars did it, at least they had the courtesy to make it somewhat neutral and appealing so that someone who's white could say, okay, 
let's talk about my racial identity development if you buy into that kind of a thing. But at least it was somewhat um, tactful. And it talked about how, you know, if a white person really decides to look at race, because sometimes white people are supposedly in a privileged bubble and they don't see race. If you really, if you really want to look at race in an honest way and you want to look at the fact that some African-Americans and people of color, you know, when they interact in society, let's be honest, in certain situations, there are differences. There is a double standard. If we want to become aware of this and become an ally and speak out and help, okay, fine. We can look at our racial identity development, okay? I'm, I'm not a big... Uh, supporter of that, but I can see the merit in that, and I can understand how you can get somewhere proactive with that. You can help. But what they're doing now, what what Brie Pickauer is doing, and what um, Barner Hess is doing with this, the eight white identities, this stuff is just it's just dressed up in racist, radical language of slavery, abolitionist. Like you, literally, you could almost argue that this is promoting genocide. I mean, it's it's crazy to say. If I look, I'm going to use radical, inflammatory language like they are. You're promoting genocide against whites, okay? How about if I say that? How does that sound? Is that is that inflammatory enough? Is is that is that radical enough to get your attention? You're promoting genocide against the culture of people. No, no, it's not against the culture of people. Whiteness is just this other thing, and they're going to use the disclaimer and all this other nonsense. So the point is this: people like Hess, people like Pickauer. It's a hustle. It's a hustle. They're using this inflammatory language. They're insulting people. They're they're violating anti-discrimination laws, okay, because they want to bring attention and they want to bring about change. But let me tell you something. It's not working. It's offensive. It's vile. It's racist. It's toxic. It's poisonous. It's polarizing. It's not looking at Dr. King's dream in terms of the content of character. It's not empowering people of color. And it sure as heck isn't bringing white people on board. White people are not feeling unified and they're not ready. Hey, I want to be a part of this. You know, my whole culture is, is racist and, and, I, and I, need to, I need to disrupt my own, my own identity and culture because I'm so horrible and vile. Yeah, I want to get on board with that, okay? It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, okay? So, so that's that. Just, just a tip, you know, you might not want to be so inflammatory and, and, and toxic with this stuff. And finally, there's an educator and this educator's name is, and I've talked about her before, her name is Nylea Weber. She's the executive director of the Orleans Public Education Network, and she wrote this blog post on a, a website called Education Post, Better Conversation, Better Education. And when, and when we, we say better conversation, better education, I guess the Education Post also means vilifying and insulting and inflaming and provoking white people. Uh, you know, by calling them all these derogatory names and, and by say, and blaming them for everything. So here's what Nylea Weber says. Here's a bullet point in, in her paper, which, by the way, Megan Kelly saw this because her children were, again, a New York City private school. These, these New York City private schools are having these racial meltdowns. But she read this, and she immediately pulled her children out of this school. So this is what Nylea Weber says in this post. It's a bullet point. Where, where are the national conferences, white papers, and policy positions on the pathology of whiteness in schools and how it leaves white children behind as adults. The pathology of whiteness. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Nylea. Thanks for saying that my culture is a pathology. Thanks for saying that my race is a pathology. I really appreciate it. It really makes me want to help out. Oh, whiteness isn't about white people? Oh, right. You have your disclaimer. Whiteness isn't really about white people. Let me tell you something. Save it. Save it. Because whiteness is about white people and enough is enough. So let's get back to the point here because I'm getting all fired up. And I'm just saying this because I want to help. I'm just saying this because I want to try and open the lines of communication and to get rid of this stuff. So let's get back to David Marcus's point in the, in the Federalist article. When progressives say whiteness, they mean white people. And here's the point. Progressives like Pickauer, like Barner Hess, like Nylea Weber... If you really want to help, stop forwarding this toxic, inflammatory, racist notion of deconstructing and dismantling whiteness because whiteness is white people and there, and there is no loophole to get us out of that, okay? That's my point. If you hear the word whiteness, know what it means. Whiteness means white people.